What is up, you guys? <laughs> this is Matthew Davis, the movie lover here. And guess what? Christmas is tomorrow. And to celebrate it, I'm going to give you guys my list for the top 20 best movies of 2016. This is going to be the big one. There were so many good movies that came out this year. It is impossible to include them all. So I'm going to list down 20. I couldn't do just 10. This year was so good with movies. There, there was pretty much just more than just 10 that I wanted to put on here. So guys, I put it in 20. Just so you know, this is my list. And if you do not like any of these movies that are on this list, you're, you're not going to agree with some. You might agree with some. You might not. This is just my own personal list. So... I'm just here to have a little fun with you guys, because I've been waiting to make this video for a while, guys. And, uh, yeah, you were probably wondering. Yes, I'm in my old room. It's empty in here. So, you know, look. I saw that. There's a hole in the wall right there. But, you know what's still here? My little mini posters. Right, right there, you see? I still got those mini posters up right there. And I still got some stuff in the closet that I didn't bring with me to my house yet. <sighs> yeah, it feels a little bit awkward being in here, but, you know, there's a lot of family coming here for Christmas, so, <laughs> yeah. So, have fun with this list. Now, before I get into this list, I want to give a shout out to a few honorable mentions. Alright, first off, The Witch. You know, the film, the horror film that came out in... Uh, February. Yeah, that movie was really good. It really surprised me. You know, I thought it was visually stunning and caused more than just lousy jump scares. As well as another horror movie, Green Room and Hush. Both of those films were really incredible, including Green Room. Green Room absolutely blew me away. I thought it had amazing acting, one of Patrick Stewart's best performances in a while. As well as Hush. Which really surprised me. Hush is one of those films that was straight to video that should have been released in theaters. It would have been a blast if I had seen that in theaters. And yeah, guys, I'm even going to include this Ouija Origin of Evil. <laughs> I'm still so happy that I actually like that movie. I'm glad that movie did not suck. <laughs> Just like the first film was awful. Guys, I have to give it an honorable mention because I really liked it, alright? It really impressed me, like really. Alright guys, and my last honorable mention is Doctor Strange. Such a visually stunning looking movie. And one of the best 3D films of the year, but I already have two Marvel films. I'm not going to be a Marvel fanboy and put every single Marvel movie that came out this year. So, I only got two on here. You pretty much already know what they are. They're going to be pretty hot on this list. But anyways, let's get started. Alright. Now, the ones that are low on this list, um, you're probably going to say, why is this lower? Why is this higher? It, it's just my own personal list. The bottom ones, I do not think are bad movies. I think they're really good, but there were just more movies that were higher that I enjoyed a lot more. So let's get started. Number 20 is Zootopia. Yeah, guys, this is going to be a tough competition here when only Zootopia only makes my number 20 spot. But hey, it's on the list. Zootopia really surprised me. I expected it to be pretty good, but I did not expect it to be incredible. All right. It feels like it's actually a reality world. It's actually taking place in a reality world, except it's with animals and it's animated. And it's made by Disney, and it truly shows that we as people have the right to choose what we want to be, alright? And this film truly showed everything I wanted Zootopia to be. Alright, number 19. And I swear I did not think this was going to be on my list, but it is. Number 19 is Swiss Army Man. I had a blast watching that movie. I thought 
I, th I thought Daniel Radcliffe was hilarious in this movie as for the score. The score was incredible. I mean, like, a lot of the film, they don't use that much score, but when they make their own music, it actually sounds really incredible. I mean, I mean, the two main stars did a great job. It, it was actually pretty original, and it had practical effects. This is a strange yet somehow amazing movie that I would watch again. I actually have it on Blu-ray because it was really that good. It was so good, I even have it on Blu-ray, guys. Alright guys, so yeah, Swiss Army Man is number 19. Number 18 is The Jungle Book. Yeah guys, this is Disney's best remake since the Cinderella remake. <laughs> Which came out last year. <laughs> but guys, seriously, The Jungle Book defied my expectations big time. I saw the trailer and I was all like, yeah, okay, I might, I'll give it a shot, but guys... I loved it so much, I loved it even more than the original animated film. I was blown away by this movie. I saw this with my mom, and we both really enjoyed this movie. It's surprising that this movie nearly made a billion dollars. Becoming one of the highest grossing films of this year, and I can say it definitely deserves all that money. And Bill Murray, guys, was fucking awesome as Baloo. Seriously, he was amazing. And the CGI for the animals looked absolutely incredible. If you want to hear me talk about this movie more, check my After I Saw video on this. Alright, guys, number 17. And this is an animated film. There are three more animated films I saw this year that I liked more than Zootopia. Number 17... Oh yeah, I forgot another honorable mention, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. How could I forget that? So yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story is another honorable mention. You didn't think I would forget? Alright, anyways, number 17 is Finding Dory. Yeah guys, this film brought my childhood back to life with this film. I was amazed by this movie. It still might not be as good as Finding Nemo, but... It just amazed me, you guys. I was surprised at how good this movie was. It was so good. This is Pixar's best uh, sequel since Toy Story 3. While it's not as good as Toy Story 3, it was still an amazing sequel. I had a lot of fun with this movie. I, I saw it with my friend Caleb. I actually made uh, a film... Or, I actually made a video where I revisited the film, seeing how I can relate to Dory, the main character Dory. Uh, go look back on my channel, I think you'll find it. So yeah, number 16, and this film, wait, this, that's 16, right? Yeah, number 16 is The Conjuring 2. James Wan did it again. I am so glad this movie did not disappoint me, just like how Annabelle disappointed me, even though James Wan didn't direct that film. But guys, this is one of the best horror sequels out there. I mean, I'm not sure if I would say this is better than the original, like a lot of people are saying, but it's still an amazing movie. I don't care if it's nearly two and a half hours long. It's two hours and 13, 14 minutes, but I don't care. I was not bored with it. I was just distracted by the amazing acting, special effects, and the scares, too. The scares are what make this movie a masterpiece, just like the first film. Alright, guys. Number 15. And I swear to God, th this film is just absolutely incredible to me. Number 15 is Don't Breathe. Another horror film that really blew me away. This film was just, I did not know what to expect with this film, but I can certainly say it's one of the best slasher films in modern history and one of the best horror films I've seen this decade. I had a blast seeing this movie, you know, the director of the Evil Dead uh, remake and the star of the Evil Dead remake did an incredible job making this film. This film 
It's truly a film that you have to experience for yourself. I don't own it on Blu-ray yet, but expect it in my next Blu-ray update. Yeah, you pretty much know where I'm going from there. Alright guys, number 14 is 10 Cloverfield Lane. You guys, 10 Cloverfield Lane was just an amazing film, alright? Even better than Cloverfield, which this is a sequel to Cloverfield, except um, it's not a found footage film. It's not like shaky cam, you know. No, no, no. However, this film has is intense, guys. John Goodman is pretty much like the male version of Kathy Bates in Misery. I'm, I'm serious, you guys. John Goodman was freaky in this movie. And the main character, the main female protagonist, wasn't stupid in this movie. She wasn't, you know, just that random girl in a horror movie that you want to get out of. She was actually smart enough to try to get out of it and using her skills to try to escape. Like when she's trying to fight the monster at the end of the movie. Sorry if that was a spoiler, but check the movie out anyway. 10 Cloverfield Lane definitely gets my number 14 spot. Alright guys, let us move on with number 13. <sighs> number 13 is The Nice Guys. One of the best comedies of the year. Alright, Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling do an amazing job in this movie. They do, they make a great duo in this film. I absolutely adored this film. It was funny, it had action, it was intense, and it feels like a classic movie from the 70s or 80s. When the old Warner Brothers logo comes up, I had a blast seeing this in the theaters. I wish it could have made more money, because this is one of the best summer movies I've seen this year. Alright? So yeah, definitely check out The Nice Guys if you haven't seen it. Alright, we're getting there. We're almost... We're nearly halfway done with this. <sighs> Alright. Number 12 is Deepwater Horizon. That's right, guys. Mark Wahlberg proved that he got it. <sighs> proved that he... <sighs> <sighs> proves... He proved that he still has it in him. He absolutely made this movie... An, an amazing, okay, okay, this was an amazing movie, you guys. I thought the visual effects and the escape sequence that happens near the end of the film, I thought this was actually a heartfelt and one of the best uh, movie based on true events I've seen in a while. I wanted Mark Wahlberg to get out of this alive, and I wanted pretty much almost every single character to get out of, you know, the deep water horizon alive, you know, because Deepwater Horizon was so good, I had to put it at least this high on this list. Alright guys, so yeah, Deepwater Horizon, you make my number 12 spot. Alright, getting there guys. Number 11, which is my second favorite animated film of this year, is Disney's Moana. Yeah, I... I said it before, I even liked it more than Zootopia. Alright, this film was so much fun to watch. Dwayne Johnson did a great job as Maui, and the animation looks incredible, you guys. This was the version of Trolls that I wanted. You know, this was the version of Trolls that I wanted. It's like an improved version of the movie Trolls, you know that stupid DreamWorks movie that I do not want to talk about. But guys, this was a beautiful looking movie. Near the end of the film, the music was actually very memorable. This is one of the best modern Disney animated films I've seen in quite a while. I saw it and I loved it, you guys. Alright, halfway done here. Alright. We're getting to the tens now. Alright. So here's my top ten now. Number 10, Arrival. Saw this in the theaters with my dad, and I don't know why this film was not released in 3D. 
It would have looked it amazing if it was released in 3D. But guys, this was absolutely amazing, you guys. It felt like Interstellar a little bit, except I liked it even more than Interstellar. The Amy Adams gave an amazing performance in this movie, as well as Jeremy Renner. The visuals, when they're actually trying to communicate, when the aliens have to shoot out these symbols so um, the humans can learn what they're trying to say. It, it absolutely looked incredible, you guys. Arrival is truly a masterwork, or a masterpiece. It's a work of art that I, I want to watch again. I could watch it again. I'm definitely buying it on Blu-ray when it comes out. <sighs> yeah. Arrival definitely deserves my number 10 spot. <laughs> All right. We're in for a treat now. Number 9 is my favorite animated film of the year, Kubo and the Two Strings. This film surprised me on so many levels, you guys. I don't know what people were thinking not seeing this movie. It deserves to be a hit at the box office. But since it's an original movie, people are all like, no, nah, let's skip out of this. And let's go watch the Angry Birds movie or Trolls instead. Those were based off something, so of course it's going to make a lot of money. But this is one of the most amazing looking stop motion animation films I have seen in a long time. This was gorgeously made. I could not believe my eyes, and the 3D looked incredible. This is Leica's best film, you guys. I hope it gets nominated for Best Animated Film at the Oscars, just like the last three movies were. I really don't understand why Box Trolls was nominated. I liked Box Trolls, but... But... I didn't think it was, you know, Oscar-worthy. This, however truly is Oscar worthy. I hope it's nominated. I'm going to be pissed off if they don't. Alright guys, <laughs> number eight, and you know that I wouldn't leave this out, number eight is one of the biggest surprises of this year. Number eight is Deadpool. <laughs> this, I had a blast seeing this in theaters. And this is definitely one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. They did everything I wanted Deadpool to have, which was fourth wall breaks, comedy, blood, and this film was so awesome and so funny, and I, I just, and that opening sequence was just truly incredible looking, you guys. One of one of, one of the best looking opening credits sequences in a movie I've seen in a long time. So, yeah guys, you have to check out Deadpool. It was amazing. But that's not my favorite Marvel movie of this year. Number 7 is. Alright guys, number 7 is Captain America Civil War. Yeah guys, the trilogy gets better and better and better. Every single time. The Captain America movies do better every single time. Captain America Civil War was remarkable. It was truly the Captain America film I wanted, you guys. I wanted action. I wanted an amazing crossover that Batman vs. Superman did not give me. But seriously, guys. CA Civil War truly was a remarkable film. And truly deserved all the money that it made at the box office. Certainly worth watching, you guys. Certainly. Alright, guys. Let's move on with number six. Number six is Sing Street. That's right, guys. Sing Street is one of the best Irish films I've seen in a very long time. It was a truly amazing film. I could not believe my eyes what I was watching. You know, the music and score, this is actually a feel-good movie that actually did make me feel good. It was dramatic, it had great performances. This is truly a film that you have to see in order to believe. Sing Street truly brought me to such an amazing level that I cannot even describe how much I love this movie. 
And I'm sure my friend Keen Bainham will agree with me on that. So yeah. <sighs> number five. Oh boy, we're getting there. Number five is Manchester by the Sea. Yeah, you were wondering, where's Manchester by the Sea? Well, here it is, guys. I adored Manchester by the Sea. It was truly dramatic and remarkable. Casey Affleck did a really great job on this movie. This brought the story to a better level. You know, just having that message at the end and that emotion to the film that I wanted it to have. It truly blew me away on every single moment. I was not bored with this movie. I want to see more. As soon as the film ended, I was truly satisfied. And I'm glad that it did not disappoint me. Manchester by the Sea gets my number five spot. All right, guys. <clears throat> number four. And this is the film that I wanted to see before I made this list. Number four is La La Land. Yeah, guys, the film that I reviewed an hour ago gets the number four spot. While it's not as good as Whiplash, it's still an amazing film. From the music, the acting, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, they do a great job in this movie together. And this is a visually stunning movie with the performances, like the music scenes, and all that, that music, I can listen to the soundtrack all day and it would never get old. And like that jazzy tune that you pretty much listen to all the time. La La Land is a masterpiece, you guys, and it deserves my number four spot. <laughs> all right. All right, guys, my number three spot. And number three truly surprised me big time. Number three is Moonlight. Moonlight was... An amazing film, you guys. An all African American cast, which feels a lot like Boyhood when you think of it, except I like this a lot more than Boyhood. Now, do not get me wrong, Boyhood is still an amazing movie, but I don't know what it is about this film that made, made me think that. But all I gotta say is Moonlight truly got me on the edge of my seat. I wanted to see more. You know, the characters were very memorable. This is one of the best films with an all-African-American cast I've seen since Boys in the Hood. Alright, this film definitely deserves its Oscar nominations that it's getting, and it's definitely a film you guys gotta check out. Alright, Moonlight definitely deserves my number three spot. Alright, guys. Now, this happens with most people, okay? I'm not sure what I want for number one or number two. I kept on thinking to myself, uh, no, this is number one, this is number two, no, this is number two, this is number one. But yeah, guys, I finally figured it out, guys. Number two is one of my most anticipated movies of the year, and I loved it on every single level. Number two is Hacksaw Ridge. <sighs> yeah. I could not stop thinking about this movie after I saw it in the theaters. This film truly satisfied me on every single level. Andrew Garfield gave an amazing performance in this movie. I loved every second of this movie. This was a war film that can be very fast-paced in the half act of the movie, although the First half of the movie, which is like an hour into the movie, um, nothing really happens that much, but I wasn't bored with the first act of this movie. I actually wanted to see what happens to the characters before the actual war scene happened, and it, it was a truly satisfying work that I could watch again. I keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this film to come out on Blu-ray already. Because I really want to watch it again. But guys, Hacksaw Ridge is an, is an amazing movie. I loved it so much. I'm so glad it didn't disappoint me. And it certainly gets my number two spot. And we, we made it, you guys. What was the best movie I have seen this year? Well, guys, you are about to find out right now. My favorite movie of 2016, 
the film that I loved more than any other movie that came out this year. Number one is Hell or High Water. That's right, guys. Hell or High Water. That's right. You probably haven't heard of it. It was a film that only got a limited release, so it obviously flopped, which pisses me off because this was the best summer movie I have seen this year. Hell or High Water blew me away on every single level. The story to the movie is one of the most original stories I've seen in a long time, from Chris Pine and Jeff Bridges' acting skills, and the fact that it kind of feels like a western a little bit, except it's just a film that takes place in a western type film. I mean, there isn't like, hey, yo partner, how are you doing? It's not like good and the bad and the ugly or stuff like that. No, it actually feels like reality except in a western world. This absolutely is my favorite film of the year. Hell or High Water, you were my favorite film of the year since I first saw you. <sighs> Definitely. I loved every single second of it. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Alright guys. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't edit this stuff out on Movie Maker with the, you know, the sounds for good or bad movie. But yeah, and as always, there will be a list for the 20 worst movies of 2016, which I'm not sure when I'm going to do that. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for another great year of movies next year. All right, so yeah, this is definitely this has definitely been an amazing year for movies for me. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Have a merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.